It's the Bradfield Weather Podcast, underwritten by Action Carpet and Floor Covering of Simsbury, a full-service, family-run flooring company offering brand-name flooring, professional installation, and cleaning services. I'm Dan Lavallo. He is meteorologist Brad Field. And Brad, as we put this podcast together on Thursday, October the 22nd, I feel as if I'm in the middle of summer with this, uh, not heat, but certainly mild weather and humidity. Oh, it's been great. Slept with the windows open last night, Dan. Uh, just uh, just really nice. Uh, it's going to be 70 to 75 out there today. A uh, little bit of a touch of summer. Yeah, uh, you know, when you think about it, 61 is the average high temperature for October 22nd. So we're going to blow past that. We're going to be about 10, 10 to uh, maybe as much as 15 degrees higher than that. So a little little touch of that uh, Indian summer type weather, which uh, has been defined as a, a stretch of nice, mild to warm weather after you get the first freeze of the season. And uh, even officially at Bradley, Dan, which tends to be one of the warm spots, there has been an official freeze so far with the temperature a few mornings back of 31. So... Uh, this is uh, this is classic, and I I hope that folks get to enjoy it because a little teaser here when we get to the crystal ball segment, you're going to see things are changing. Well, you know it's interesting because I remember on last week's podcast you talked about the jet stream and how it was dipping in the middle of the country, but we were going to be on the mild side because we were under the jet stream, and we have a family member member who was out visiting relatives in Minneapolis a couple of days <laughs> yeah. ago, and she was out there when they got the snow. So I said, this is just what you were talking about. Exactly. I mean, there are huge fluctuations in the jet band, and we've talked about that before. Let's, let's use a rubber band. We call this the rubber band theory. Now, if I have a rubber band in my hand and I gently pull it back maybe an inch or two and let it go, it will pop in the other direction an inch or two. Now, if I take that same rubber band and stretch it to the point it almost breaks, like stretch it out a foot or something and let it go, it will go shooting in the other direction. That is how the Earth maintains its thermal balance. If it's slightly warm somewhere, it's usually slightly cool somewhere. If it's very warm somewhere, it's typically very cold somewhere to counterbalance that. We are seeing that right now, Dan. We are seeing huge ridges and deep troughs. We are still under the jet stream, which means the jet stream is to our north and west, which means we are in the mild air. Point is, enjoy it, because there are going to be changes taking place. Now, that friend of yours that um, was out in Minneapolis, the most snow, Dan, that they've ever had in October was 8.2 inches of snow in 1991. Now, I don't know how much your your friend measured, but officially at the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, they've recorded eight inches so far this month. And there is another six to 12 inches of snow coming for the uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul area Saturday and Sunday. So they are going to blow that uh, October uh, 1991 record right out of the sky. Uh, so major records being set there and, and also elsewhere across the country as well. So what's at play here from an atmospheric standpoint leading to all of this disparity? Well, the, uh, the strong ridge, in other words, the dry air, the very warm air, is up the western seaboard of the United States now, up from California to Oregon to Washington to British Columbia, and then up uh, even just slightly to the east of Alaska, up into the Canada Rockies. It is taking air from the North Pole now. That's all warm underneath that ridge, but the flow on the uh, lee side is, is from the North Pole down, just kind of driving into the center part of the country. So uh, essentially from the Rockies and points east, it's cold, except here on the extreme eastern seaboard of the United States, it's still mild. 
But the point I'm making here is that it is still mild. We've got the mild weather today. We'll have mild weather tomorrow. Uh, Saturday looks fairly mild, but then it turns quite a bit cooler starting Sunday. So we have a few more days of this uh, warm stuff. I would call next week overall transitional, transitioning to cooler. Not every single day is going to be cool, but it will be transitioning to cooler next week. And then I think as we start the uh, beginning part of November, we go into a cold weather pattern. So that, uh, that deep trough, Dan, listen to this highlight I have for you. Billings, Montana. Now, we are, uh, we are recording this podcast on Thursday, October 22nd. So two nights hence, Saturday night, October 24th, the record low in Billings, Montana is 18, set in 1997. Now, usually when we talk about breaking a record, we break it by maybe one degree, maybe two degrees, something like that. We are predicting a low of four in Billings, Montana on Saturday night. So that would just obliterate that record. Sunday night, the, the record is even more dramatic. The record low for Billings, Montana for Sunday night, October 25th, 22, set in 2002. The National Weather Service Billings, Montana is, is predicting zero on mm. Sunday night. So just some serious cold. Uh, the record cold there plunges, as I said, all the way to the south, places like uh, New Mexico, and then over to Texas, up to Oklahoma and Kansas. That area is looking at record cold. Now, as the cold air comes in, widespread snows are likely. I already told you about the 6 to 12 inches that they're thinking for Minneapolis uh, Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. Montana, the, uh, the east-facing slopes especially, looking for a foot to a foot and a half of snow as this Arctic air plunges to the south. It's going to go, Dan, all the way down into Texas, the, uh, the proverbial blue norther, as they call it in Texas. The temperatures on Saturday in Amarillo will be in the 70s, okay? But by Sunday night and Monday, temperatures will be in the 20s. So, you know, just a dramatic, dramatic change happening across the country. And if this type of jet holds with the uh, big ridges and the deep troughs, we can expect a stormy winter and a cold winter, too. And I want to tease that right now. That is not my official forecast. My official forecast, Dan, is going to be next Thursday. Uh, it is very same place, very same time. But next Thursday, October 29th, we will be issuing our forecast for the uh, winter season 2020 and 2021. Yep, that will be our next podcast. Now, I hesitate to bring this up talking about winter, but what's going on in the tropics? Well, we've got uh, Hurricane Epsilon. Uh, but it's uh, what we call a fish storm, Dan. It's not going to do anybody much harm. Uh, it's going to kick up the, the seas around Bermuda. It's uh, giving Bermuda a fairly wide berth to the east, but it will be bypassing Bermuda tomorrow and then move on up into the North Atlantic, and it may curve uh, to the east and move toward the British Isles. So we'll have to watch that, uh, but it would just be a big storm when it got there. It wouldn't be really a hurricane or anything. It would encounter a lot of cold water on the way. So, uh, you know, giving Bermuda kind of a wide berth and then uh, moving north into the North Atlantic and then uh, shunted to the east toward the British Isles. So that's, uh, that's where Epsilon is. But Epsilon is the only, uh, the only uh, game in town as far as the tropics go. The Bradfield Weather Podcast is underwritten by Action Carpet and Floor Covering of Simsbury. I want to take a moment to talk about Action Carpet and Floor Covering of Simsbury, underwriters of the Bradfield Weather Podcast. Founded in 1993 by Kevin Blake, Action Carpet and Floor Covering has a mission. And that mission is to understand how customers' individual flooring needs are met and to help customers realize all of their options. 
Now, Action Carpet and Floor Covering aims to assist customers in making an informed flooring purchase, a purchase that will suit a customer's budget requirements and lifestyles. Building relationships of trust and comfort is of the utmost importance for the Action Carpet and Floor Covering team. Action Carpet and Floor Covering wants customers to be beyond satisfied. Action Carpet is there for you. Flooring, vinyl, laminate, hardwood, backsplashes, area rugs, check. Carpeting, yes. Tiling needs, yes. Action Carpet and Floor Covering handles it all. Call Action Carpet and Floor Covering today, 860-651-8406, 860-651-8406. Action Carpet and Floor Covering, you can also visit them online, action-carpet.com, action-carpet.com. Action Carpet and Floor Covering of Simsbury, underwriters of the Bradfield Weather Podcast. Let's get back to our On the Weather Map segment here. Is this jet stream shifting? Yes, uh, it is, I'm afraid. So uh, by daybreak uh, tomorrow, Dan, which is Friday, October 23rd, we're going to see a little pressure area near uh, Michigan, uh, probably in the upper part of the lower peninsula, with a warm front that extends to upstate New York. So if you liked uh, sleeping with the window cracked open last night, you'll love it again tonight. I think uh, lows tonight will be generally in the mid-50s, which uh, you know can happen on a summer night. So we are, we are looking at a, a very, very comfortable weather pattern, 70 to 75 uh, today, Thursday, October 22nd, 50s overnight tonight. Now, with that... Um, with that low in Michigan uh, Friday daybreak, the warm front through upstate New York, by Saturday, that low in Michigan will track to the northern uh, sections of Quebec province. And we're going to have a cold front entering into western New England. So Friday and Saturday, we are ahead of the cold front. So we are uh, in, in mild weather up until then. Saturday, we start to transition and then Sunday, a big, cool high will be over eastern Canada. Northerly flow will be in here with much cooler conditions. And oftentimes, Dan, when you're in a, uh, a transitional weather pattern, you have a fight. And in this case, we've got the cold air trying to come and the warm air trying to hang on. So that's the battleground. And the battleground is going to shift over us early next week. I think by Monday, there'll be a low near Detroit, and by Tuesday morning, the low will be tracking into Nova Scotia with a cold front strung out across, uh, right across Connecticut, I think, by Tuesday morning. That's the battleground with the warm air trying to hold, the cold air trying to take over, and I think a, a goodly amount of rain is going to occur while, while that is going on. And, uh, Dan, I wanted to point out, I, I wanted to give the folks, um, I, you, you know, you and I both found the, the same uh, link on the web that uh, it, it gives the good dr uh, drought analysis for the state of Connecticut. And we've had a rainy month so far in October, but this is the first time in several months we've had above normal precipitation. We've had 3.95 inches of rain so far. But we still have abnormally dry to severe drought conditions going on across the state. Now, they update the website every Thursday. And uh, I kept refreshing before we recorded this podcast, but all I can get is Thursday, October 15th. So they will be out with another update at some point today. And if the folks want to go to the uh, drought monitor, it's very good. It's, it's simply this URL. It's drought monitor, all one word, dot UNL, which is, means the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. So drought monitor dot UNL dot EDU. And Dan, as has been the case all summer long when, when we were having the really bad drought conditions, the worst of the drought is in eastern Connecticut. The whole state is abnormally dry. But the, the eastern part of the state is where the drought conditions are most severe. 
and I read that these are some of the factors that uh, are considered. Crop loss is widespread, and that's uh, especially over eastern Connecticut. And now, Dan, as we go into the holiday season, you're going to find that Christmas tree farms are very stressed. So if you're the uh, type of family, such as my family, the Friday after Thanksgiving, no matter what the weather, we've gone out on beautiful days, we've gone out, it's been snowing, we've gone out in rainstorms, but it's always the Friday right after Thanksgiving that uh, our family and our, our larger family all goes out and goes uh, Christmas tree shopping. But um, they, they did say on the um, the drought monitor that Christmas trees could be very stressed this year. Uh, well drillers and bulk water haulers are seeing a sharp increase in business also as wells are running dry, especially over the eastern part of the state. But the good news the, the 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 good news is if your well has not run dry, it probably won't because we have had a goodly amount of rain during the month of October. I would still be very very cautious and and uh, you know take maybe three or four minute showers at the most. I wouldn't let the water run for fifteen or twenty minutes or something like that unnecessarily. So still be careful with your water usage, but we, we have had a good amount of rain so far in October, almost four inches already, and it looks like a, a, a you know considerable amount of rain coming in the Monday, Tuesday, perhaps Wednesday time frame as the warm air tries to hold and the cold air tries to take over. Well, that's good news for another one of our family members because he and his family have well water and it has not been dry this year where he is. He's been very fortunate. And now to hear you say that, I know he's going to embrace that as welcome news. Yes, yes. Very welcome news, Dan. I mean, you know, the the, the, the farmers in Connecticut, I'm sure, have been suffering throughout, the, uh, throughout this year. Uh, you know, this is probably... Uh, I, I, especially in my retired life here, the, the last three years that I've been home more often, I've been, you know, taking pride in the yard and the lawn and whatever. And, um, we do have one of the services that comes and puts the chemicals down and whatever. We've had that for about 10 years, but I must say, uh, this is the worst that my lawn has ever looked, uh, in terms of like uh, patches of it just being dead or dormant or whatever you want to call it. But uh, it, it's been a tough year uh, uh, for the, for especially for the farmers, and uh, you know for the crops in Connecticut and the lawns in the gardens. Well, all of this provides the perfect segue to our crystal ball segment. Uh, it seems hard to believe, but we are knocking on the door to November first. Here we are on Thursday, October twenty second. November first is a week from Sunday, so look into your crystal ball. Well, um, I'm going to start with next. Thursday, which is uh, October 29th, and then we'll go through Halloween. We'll, we'll actually go through Election Day, Dan. I think a lot of people will be happy when that's over, <laughs> um, which is uh, Tuesday, uh, November 3rd. But um, we'll take the crystal ball segment from Thursday, October 29th through Wednesday of uh, November 4th. We are going to continue to see a huge ridge on the West Coast, what I explained, from California to Oregon to uh, Washington up into British Columbia. And then that will induce a downstream trough. But this whole trough will be shifting east. So uh, New England is going to get in on the act. Because remember I said next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are transitional days as the cold air tries to take over. But I think certainly by Halloween and uh, then the weekend uh, that follows, uh, excuse me, Halloween is, is on the weekend. It's on Saturday. But then Sunday is November 1st. So that weekend there, the transition from October to November, is going to see the, the, the cold air really starting to win out. So the ridge in the west, um, maybe a little bit of a ridge holding on in, in Florida, the southeast ridge. But it looks like a massive trough uh, east of the Rockies, all the way south to Texas with the jet stream cutting out through the mid-Atlantic. 
And Dan, if you've been around New England for a while, you know that if you've got a setup like that where you've got cold air in place and a jet stream moving out through the mid-Atlantic, that can fire some storms up up the coast. So, you know, we're going to be watching for that, too. It looks like um, the National Weather Service outlook for that period is for cold with respect to average here in Connecticut. So starting after the transition, so we're starting Thursday the 29th, going through the weekend of Halloween, going through Election Day to Wednesday, November 4th, cold with respect to average here in Connecticut, and above average precipitation up and down the eastern seaboard. So that's good news, too, because we've got the, the rain coming in some fashion later Monday, I think, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, and then even beyond that in the crystal ball segment that takes us through the first several days of uh, November, it looks wet with respect to average, too. So uh, the water tables will be coming up. And we said on the last podcast how important that is to get the water tables up before the ground freezes into concrete. Wow. Well, it's just uh, it's just amazing. But, you know, we're at that time of year, Brad, where we're going to see these changes. I mean, after all, as we mentioned in the podcast last week, and here we are this week, we're now, as of today, four hours and 23 minutes less of daylight than we had the first day of summer. So all of this is just falling into place. We shouldn't be surprised, right? Right. And uh, and uh, also what we're going to be encountering too, Dan, uh, pretty soon, I'm not exactly sure the date, maybe you have it in front of you or no, but when we uh, fall back in terms of the uh, clocks transitioning uh, from daylight saving time to uh, Eastern Standard Time. So I believe that'll be coming up sometime in, in early November, which will give the illusion <laughs> that winter's right around the corner. Uh, but uh, I've been noticing, too, I get up with my wife in the morning. Uh, and she gets off to she leaves the house for work around quarter seven, ten of seven. And I've been noticing lately that We've gone from broad daylight at that time to now it's pretty darn dark still <laughs> at that at that hour. So uh, yeah, they we're we're shrinking daylight on both ends of the day. We sure are. Well, Brad, as we put a lid on our podcast, and again, we're putting this together on Thursday, October twenty second. What does the immediate forecast look like? Oh, what a gorgeous, gorgeous day today, Dan. If you've got some outdoor work, you've got uh, uh, some time to do. Today would be a nice day to do it. Partly sunny with temperatures between 70 and 75. Now, you spoke of humidity. It is kind of humid out there for the time of year. And overnight tonight, the temperature is going to drop down toward what the dew point is. I dew point, it will be about 55, and the temperature will drop down to about 55, which will make the relative humidity about 100%. And there's been some scattered uh, uh, fog around in the mornings, and I, I do expect more fog to develop late tonight, some late night mist. Uh, for Friday, it'll be mostly cloudy. There might be a shower or two around. Remember, we'll have a warm front in the vicinity. Uh, temperatures with the cloud cover a little uh, less warm. We'll call it 60s for Friday. Uh, mostly cloudy Friday night, temperature near 50. Saturday, it looks like a mix of clouds and sun temperatures in the 60s. Now, Sunday is the, the, the beginning of some changes. Sunny and cool, temperatures in the low to mid 50s. So you'll have that real feel of fall in the air on Sunday. Uh, Monday, a rising chance for showers as the day progresses, temperature near 60. And I think uh, Thursday and Wednesday look similar. Rain likely and chilly with uh, temperatures in the 50s. So um, remember, we need the rain. Uh, you can go to droughtmonitor.unl, University of Nebraska, Lincoln.edu, and you can go to uh, bradfieldweather.com any time, day or night, and uh, get the latest forecast. Well put, my friend. And as we always do to wrap up our podcast, we want to thank the first responders who are on the line putting their lives for us every day. And so a big thank you to them and to you and Sandy, your family, and our entire podcast audience. Have a great weekend. That sounds good, Dan. I echo your sentiments and uh, best to you and Susan and our whole podcast audience. Thank you.
Thanks, Brad. The Bradfield Weather Podcast has been underwritten by Action Carpet and Floor Covering of Simsbury, a full-service, family-run flooring company offering brand-name flooring, professional installation, and cleaning services.